Yes, hello. Great to be there. Um, thanks for coming. Um, I'm researcher at IRCAM. Um, I would love that we um, talk about aesthetic and whatever political, social um, uh, uh, implications of all this stuff. Um, but I will, as an engineer, step right away into technology. I'm working currently, I'm coordinating a research project called COSIMA, Collaborative Situated Media, with a couple of partners. We as a research lab, um, there's the uh, applied arts with visual stuff. But what we all have together that we explore different scenarios of collaboratively play together through smartphones connected to a common network. And there are people working on sound works, there are people on, uh, working on party situations with total control uh, of everybody on everybody. And we as IRCAM, we're defending, I guess, two paradigms or two basic scenarios in this research work. One is maybe you could call it collective performance or even collective improvisation. And the other you could call, I don't like the term, but as a technical term, it's good, participative concerts, so where people, instead of just listening, are listening and playing, participating with their smartphones in the concert. So I will just um, talk a little bit about the, about the technical background and then show some videos of work we did and, and then we will eventually play together some stuff. And um, yeah, so the technology behind this is what it's mobile devices. Why we like mobile devices? Because they are truly ubiquitous. They are everybody or almost everybody has this thing in his pocket and it takes it everywhere. So it's not always charged. It's not always the right model, whatever. It doesn't always have the right browser installed. But anyway, it's there and we can do something with it. And every smartphone almost has multimodal sensing. I mean, there are a lot of sensors in these things, right? Multi-touch, 3-axis accelerometer, 3-axis gyroscope, 3-axis magnetometer for motion sensing. There's a microphone, there's a camera, then there's actually some other sensors that are not exposed to our APIs. But anyway, and it has some very decent audio visual rendering capacities. It is screened, it has a decent audio subsystem and uh, quite a computation power. I'm at IRCOM for a long time and why, when I arrived at IRCOM, we just started to work on computers. We, we uh, bought like everybody in the supermarket, but before I came to IRCOM, just before, I came to IRCAM, they were building these machines to do real-time processing. It was these ISPWs. You could put three of them, each with two Intel RISC processors, into a Next Cube. Next was this thing Steve Jobs created when they fired him from Apple. And uh, it was a very powerful machine that day. And it's hard to compare, but browsing through different kind of... Uh, um, benchmark sites and so on. I think that my smartphone, which is not the last generation, has from two to four times more computation power than this next computer with three double Intel RISC processors in there. And, um, well, that's, that's what I like about smartphones. So the other thing we like is web standards. And uh, we like web standards because, I oh know, what are we? like web standards because they are standards. And um, since everybody has a smartphone, so everybody um, has these standards in his pocket too, implemented in web browsers. Now, the reality is not so easy, but it's really almost there. So web standards for us is, of course, HTML5, JavaScript. It's Web Audio API, which is not a standard yet, but the proposal of a standard filed by Google, now maybe even two years ago, and competed with another s proposal uh, worked out by Mozilla, and um, the community was uh, voting for, for Google standard. Mozilla is totally fine with it. They now implemented this, that standard too. It was, by the way, um, Chris Rogers, the guy who 
was really important at Apple to do the wonderful core audio, who for Google created the web audio API that will be a standard if everything goes well somewhere around next year. So that gives you the possibility not to just to play a sound file, but to do decent interactive real-time audio in a browser. We use device motion orientation, which gives you access to the sensors. We use web sockets, which gives you the possibility to communicate between machines. And we would um, use more web RTC than we do if Apple wouldn't block it for now. And then, this is not a standard, but a very useful thing to mention in this list of technologies. We need use Node.js as a JavaScript programmable web server to make these things talk in the way we want them to talk to each other. So we created these um, workshops we, we, that are not about, like, like lots of interesting things about writing these things, but uh, to work with people who would perform with us, like we will do it. And we call them the collective sound checks. So everybody with a smartphone, this is what we will do. So this is uh, an example of a collective sound check, where we invite people to perform with their smartphones. If they are, if they are less than um, 30, we give them a loud, loudspeaker. If they are more than, well, we can't do that. And um, well, I think this is what we will do now. So please. Just connect to the Wi-Fi Cosima. I will do the same to see if that really works. And then take um, Safari or Chrome, please. Don't take your default internet browser on Android 4.2. It has to be Chrome. Chrome is now standard on all Android devices. And just go to co.z.ma slash birds. And what you should have is a list of buttons right. Then you choose one of these birds. Now, performing together, if ever, you know, just, you know, I'm sure lots of you are familiar with performing, improvising together. You know, um, if you, you won't, won't understand right away how that works and everything. Ooh. And um, when you don't understand how it works, don't make more make less. It's much more pleasant to listen to the others making sounds around you than making sound yourself anyway. So it's an act of generosity to make sound, of course, for the others, but you know, don't feel obliged to do that. And if you don't understand anything, just you know, take it easy and don't do it. So we have all a little difficulty to charge these sounds. I have it. Sorry, I have this other web page doing something. Choose your bird and perform with the others. So this is a simple web page, like Right. This is just, you know, one of these finger exercises we did over the last two years to prove ourselves that you can do decent interactive sound in a web page. It's just a web page. And by the way, I give you the, the URL later if you want to play some birds with your friends or your children. You can have it. Just as an entry drug, this one. So um, next I would ask you to 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 just you know we could perform something else together which is a little more musical but still super sam simple and just a web page and that would be the monks so still the same instead of birds it's monks so it's a play in words i'm very proud of so it's meredith monk and a tibetan monk you can choose between And one, I just, you know, the, the, here it's very different. You don't shake it, you just go like this. Oh. 
And you can do it very cool, you just go. Or you can go in. <laughs> so this is granular synthesis. Of course, just scrubs with granular synthesis through a file, depending on the angle of your phone that is delivered to us through a JavaScript API in this web page, and using Web Audio API implementing granular synthesis. Right, you you see how, where this gets. It's a listening exercise. It has to do with sound that is all over the space. We could run around and have fun with that. So, so far for these two, so no connection between the phones, this is just web pages and, you know, just gadgets. There are some others, and I will show you some videos about others we did, and they are online too. What about this one? Just a web page. Your big disgrace, kicking your can all over the place. We will, we will rock you. Sing it. We will, we will rock you. Buddy, you're a boy, make a breeze. You get the idea. So this mo most sophisticated piece of, of, of this um, little, you know, it's again, it's an application that has the same address as the others. I don't give it to you because we will move on very quickly. Um, <laughs> I, I just will switch this quickly into my smartphone. So it's again like the birds, you have some buttons. And um, uh, good. Okay, so this is clear. Okay, then there is the, the choirs, which is... Um, okay, and then there's this one, we will, we will rock you, okay? And then there is the, the most sophisticated piece of it, which is... Okay, so this is our little re will rock you reloaded. <laughs> oh yeah. I'll sh show you once more, one more along these lines. This is a, it's, it's a screenshot from a video from a French artist who, who invited us to collaborate on a little project that was never done, but we, we have the result of it as a web page. Yes. Um, so what if we would um, enable the visitor of a web page to perform an instrument in an instrument minus one thing where we would have a music track and you would uh, just perform, for example, the guitar. This is Mojo by a French artist called M. Mathieu Chedid, and this would go like this. So I'm performing the guitar and everything else is just running off, right? And I can... Okay, small ones. I have just one, two levels of uh, Okay, you get the idea. <laughs> 
Just a web page, huh? just a web page. Um, I will put this back here. What else? Um, oh yeah, this is uh, something we did in our workshops. So here we start now. This was all, you know, it's just web pages. HTTP servers, um, you can just publish them as you like without any fancy Node.js servers I already told you about. It's just uh, web pages. Um, loading some sound files. Nah, nah, nah. And um, here's a scenario where, where we said, okay, it's cool if we can um, synchronize all mobile phones that would then connect to a server and do some NTP stuff, some fancy, okay, we send some ping pong around and estimate how our audio clocks are deriving one against the other and, and then making just that everybody has a common time that with web technologies, we can be under 10 milliseconds often after, with, with these phones, often after uh, under 3 milliseconds, and if we are very lucky, on 0 0.1 milliseconds, which is already decent to do rhythmic stuff. So this is not audio synchronized. We can't do wave field synthesis with money loudspeakers or something, because we are not in phase signal-wise, uh, you know, above this frequency where we should. Um, but we are in sync rhythm-wise. So here's a little scenario where um, we didn't film the teenagers we did the workshops with because it's complicated. You, won't, don't, you have to ask the parents and you don't want to ask the parents of teenagers if you can, you know, the teenagers don't come if you ask the parents if they can film. <laughs> so this is ourselves doing this thing. <laughs> it's, it's, so the setup is that there's a microphone in the middle of the room and everybody can go and do something percussive. And um, we would analyze it, actually it's a little Maximus P patch, we would analyze it and then you can go load on your smartphone and you can shake this thing. That's the scenario. And you know, by people going up to the microphone and, and having the, uh, the, the instructions to do different dynamics, to do pianissimo and fortissimo stuff or you know, intense stuff and you know, the system will take care for the rhythm, you will see it's all synced, it's all on boom, 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 and a machine beat, but then, you know, by um, recording complementary materials, you could do something like this, for example. So we recorded this always inside the phone, actually, and then to do the montage of the video. It's not fake, it's just that we recorded inside the, mic the, the phone. It's really live performed. We record the sound inside the phone and sync it to the video. This is how the recording is done. Of course, um, it doesn't sound exactly the same with a little loudspeaker, but here, for example, I have a little beatboxing thing. You could do something with these little loudspeakers. So, what's next? Oh, yeah, okay. So, here we had synchronization between people, right? So now let's get onto the two big things we want to do, and we have still some time to figure out what's interesting in this area. One is um, collective improvisation, and the other is um, p giving people the possibility to do something um, in a concert. I wasn't not super. I always thought that's weird as an artist having some kilowatt and you have this little loudspeaker, and that's not fair. We worked with Chloe, which was falling, who, who, who was falling from heaven for us. And um, she was agreeing that she would just give it the necessary space in her concerts. So it's moments that last for 30 seconds, one minute and a half or something, where she just lets the whole thing fall down <laughs> and gives space to people to play and then kind of gets her kilowatt in again, little by little. And this interplay between what the people do, you know, like, you know, like 
a texture or some would kind of trick, figure something out like the birds you know you try to maybe to to play with your neighbor and you know that all makes it too wabu but it's nice because it fills space and it's like a forest in any case and um, she would give this space and then and the the materials the people would play with can come back later in her performance and that's kind of interesting thing. So I think there is, um, in spite of what I thought at the beginning about this genre, I think there's something interesting to do. So this was the 3rd of October in the, at the Gaîté Lyrique in Paris. Uh, I discovered that of this four minutes video, three minutes are empty and there's one minute of something that looked browsing through it in, like what I remember from the concert. Let's discover it together. So here we are at the beginning of the concert, people getting in, connecting to the system. And they have already this, right away, this little thing on their phone they can play with. So you have all over the place. And then at a point, of course, Chloe starts to play, does her thing. And at certain points, she would um, make sound travel over the audience's smartphones and um, enable on the people's smartphones um, little instruments and then taking back really her sound and uh, oh that's all well there's some work uh, to get this documentary right I guess but it gives you a little idea of you know there are people with smartphones and there's Chloe on stage and uh, and now we will do that actually we will do that now and this time I ask you to connect to co.z.mar again but this time because there's another server running on my on my machine which is a node.js server and this time you must do colon doppelpunkt 3000 in order to get into the system. Here we go. Cosima co.z ma colon 3000. Oh yeah, and, and Chloe gave me this track actually. We, we recently transformed the concert into a into, um, sound installation which runs at the moment in, in Paris where we have 21 phones st stuck to the wall so that you can, you know, you can play alone in this or with many people, but you know, it makes sense even if you're alone because there's 21 phones playing with you on the wall. And I will play it. So we get a little idea. So I'm not Chloe, okay, I don't perform this, it will be very not good, but we have a little idea what I mean by, well, what you're doing has a certain, certain uh, rapport and certain relationship with what she is doing. So this is my little sound file. It actually runs off Ableton live in the sound installation. So here, oh yeah. So this is how it starts approximately. And then, for example, it would, Chloe would go and at the very beginning say, okay, you, you all can play on this one. It's in French too. Again, if you don't know how it works, do less. And then I can go. And I have here four, I have two iPads, she has four iPads and Run these sounds over your phones. Or this one. Okay, and then let's say kind of this thing, kind of then I, I will jump a little bit in this sound file. He then starts really 
developing her thing and then eventually she will say okay now it's me and we'll go you know she does that very well actually I won't do that very well and then eventually she will start to play really and cuts you off and then goes like doing some sound on your smartphones She does as well, very much better than I do. Okay, and at a certain point, I think it's around here. I mean, she improvised this. This is now the version that, that makes in 15 minutes what basically she improvises in a concert of, of 30 minutes. And I think it's around here. Yeah, 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 yeah. She would go and give you this instrument. That's her again. So you figured out maybe already that the little melody that is there, you get it when you just go slowly around the circle here with your finger, which we don't explain to anybody, and of course, it's not, you're not obliged to figure this out. It's just how it happens. Makes clink, clunk, clunk, clink, 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 clunk in the concert, and she would go boom, and again, take over at a certain point, and whatever then comes. And there, maybe you still are doing clink, clunk, clunk. She goes like, playing a little on her smartphones, and. At a certain point, which is, I think, around here, yes, I think so, she would give again, after some break, another instrument that is this one, and you play it like this. it up like this and then you just go Okay, so this is not a concert, it's just a demo, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and eventually she will cut you off again. And it always makes a nice fade out on your phone. And at the very end, uh, we basically go back where we have been at the beginning. Just we changed the phrase that says now not, oh, what's happening, what's going on, how this works. But at the end it says, uh, Psh, shut up, it's over, go home basically, or something like this. And the concert is over after kind of 30 minutes of uh, hopeful fun. We have 40 participants, that's great. Thank you, thank you very much, it's, it's great. How are we on time? Good, we can do one more thing. So that was the, the participative concert, right? So um, very honestly, I'm still not very relaxed with the idea that she has kilowatts and kilowatts and she is pushed into this kilowatts and kilowatts situation in certain, certain situations of concerts, like the last one, for example. And I was not quite, you know, she, she had to do this. She has, has to do her, her, her thing, of course, and we do this not very often, so our our 
summary for now of this calibration is that I guess the big concert thing with the kilowatt is not where we want to go. We want to go to more intimate situations where maybe a hundred, you know, no matter how many people, but it's not a club situation where people drink and talk, but you know, more kind of a relaxed situation, people sitting on the floor and maybe she's in the middle and do something more cool than, can the, than the classical club situation where it's really, really difficult to get, to get off the kilowatts. So this is where we go, I guess, um, with this kind of stuff. And I'm still very excited, and I think there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to do to make this really fun. So let's see. Um, what else? What else? We have uh, one more thing to perform together, if you're still ready. And um, that is a thing um, we call drops. It's a performance. And drops, um, we basically stole from Brian Eno's um, iPhone app Bloom. Some of you know, it's uh, some ambient music and you do kind of, you touch your screen and it does a blob, a bling, and that whatever you do will be repeated and it's, it's very well done. So um, we did something like that, but um, of course what is, what, 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 we don't claim, you know, we, we're engineers here, okay? It's just a demo of what we think is possible with these technologies. And Brian Eno was a f had, had the perfect idea how to do something that is, of course, musically simply and, and good. And normally we, we work with a composer who, who made as well a background track, which is not Eno-like, but you know, like the stuff he does and fits well together too. I don't have it here, actually, I, f I, f I forgot it on this machine. So we will just do it without it, we will just do drops. And, and other than the iPhone application, Bloom, what will happen is that whatever you play on your phone will be repeated on another person's phone sometime later, some seconds later, and again on another person's phone, and then it comes to ba back to you. And you don't know where this person is because we don't know where you are in this scenario. We didn't do it, you know, you won't say where you are. We don't know where you are. So it's just somebody in the room, but sometimes you will hear that, sometimes you won't hear it. Whatever you do on your phone is repeated by somebody else's phone, by somebody else's phone, before it comes back to you and fades a little by little away. Again here, doing less is more, right? I mean, if you really want to appreciate this Cling, cling, cling thing that will install itself here as a texture. The less cling, clings they are, the most exciting it is. Okay, I will control one thing in this scenario. I have this little, you know, I'd like to write an article which is this is not an orchestra. Okay, this is you are not a mobile phone orchestra, please, not at all. Anyway, I have something here that is called conductor. Okay, it's just a web page that allows me to control how many drops you can play. And um, we will start with one, and then I will add some to it. And um, if ever you don't want to make this thing you did circle round with two of your partners, you just shake your phone and it will be like in the Bloom iPhone application, by the way. And you can do, again, a drop or several, okay? That's how it works. I will again see how many people are conducted. It's like the last one, just that it's 4,000. And we will start with one. So, as I said, it's not about making too much. You know already how it works, not difficult. And, you know, pitch is changing in that direction and kind of reverb or resonance is changing in that direction. It's not very exciting, it's not very important. And um, so the instruction I would like to give you um, is not to play.
very good. Okay, yeah, thank you. I really would like to talk with you about all this. To wrap up, I have maybe one other slide. So why we do all this? Um, my best excuse is that I really want, you know, working with people, writing interesting experimental music for tape, for instruments, for instrument and tape, and real-time computers, and tapes and real-time computers, and whatever, and electronic devices and everything. Um, I really want something new, new, new that challenges the brains of creators. And I think this is something new, new, new that has to challenge the brains of creators. If you're new right for this, there is a new solfege, counterpoint, harmony, everything applies. Beats, grooves, whatever you like, but you must rethink it completely. And, I w you know, we're at the very, very beginning with this. Um, and that is very exciting. Um, I want to just throw this up quickly. Um, I, I love this Christopher Small's definition of musiking so much, which is a big motivation to do. Of, of trying to do something of this. I read it for you badly. The act of music can establish in the place where it is happening here. A set of relationships ships and in and it is in those relationships that the be meaning of the act lies, the act of music. King. They are to be found not only between those organized sounds, which are conventionally thought of as the stuff of musical meaning, but also between the people who are taking part in whatever capacity in the performance. You know, his, his first accomplishment is that musicking is something that spans over listening, all musical practices, listening, um, just passing by a loudspeaker or being in a in an elevator, exposed to music, it is performing, it is composing, whatever, producing, mixing, whatever, right? Um, in whatever capacity in the performance, and they model or stand as, as a metaphor for ideal relationships between person and person, between individual and society, between humanity and the natural world, and even perhaps, of course, if you look to Baroque music or, or even before, the supernatural world. So uh, this is very beautiful, and I think um, what you just did is really a new metaphor of making music together. It has always existing, it existed, um, of course. Um, so where we come from, I don't know quite well, because there are practice, of course, in, in the, out of Europe, and in Europe, where people make music spontaneously together, you know. So, of course, we come from there. Um, anyway, it is amazing how few composers have written for the audience's action. It's amazing. It's amazing that there are not more pieces where people would actually do something. Whatever, you know, we don't need smartphones for it. You can. It, it's amazing, and um, my hope is because you know you do you don't do anything with technology that somebody else doesn't have done has done already without technology or with different technology. But the hope, of course, is that smartphones give some support to each of us that we, in this situation where we didn't rehearse, where we come just up and improvise, have something that supports us a little bit more. You know, there's a little automation in there, there's a little synchronization in there, whatever, you know. So, um, where are we going? Well, we, where we are, we're at the very, 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 very beginning of our research project and of our research, and I think there's a lot to do. It's all about now that the technology kind of runs, I'm pretty happy with the technology, um, we must write music, of course, and this is what we didn't do. We just uh, stole something from um, Brian Eno. And but talking to creators, to composers, they are pretty intrigued. So I'm very confident that people will pick this up and do something fun from it. Of course, composers are not used to take care of how people feel so much. 
I mean, sorry, composer of I think I'm an Irkham guy, okay? So I'm talking about the, the composers I know. Of course, there are lots of composers who care very much about the perception of, you know, the, the perception and all the sense of the meaning of the pieces. But, you know, what I want to say is that um, we're not used that people do something in the concert, and writing for people doing something in concerts is really something very um, difficult because we, we don't know about it. So where we're going, we, we want to go on writing. Um, about web audio, some references. So um, we organized the first web audio conference at IRCAM in January this year. The second will be in April next year in Atlanta. The website is up. The, the deadline for paper submissions is over. Um, you will see. We created a couple of libraries. So there is the Wave GS lab library that under that is under hood of, of many things I show you. Saw you. It's based on Web Audio API. It it doesn't wrap Web Audio API in anything. It's a contribution of modules that are compliant with Web Audio API and that use, of course, Web Audio API to do something uh, more or less meaningful. And then there's the Cosima project. Of course, there is a blog kind of that reports about what we're doing. There is all this, we will rock you and birds and, and monk stuff is cosima.ircom.fr slash chacks. You have a list of buttons where you can access to different of these gadgets I just showed you. And everything we did um, so far, you know, like drops and, and the Chloe, Chloe concerts, um, everything we know about how that could work is um, formalized in this library called Soundworks, and uh, that is on GitHub. And um, ah, that's all. Let's talk about it.